Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. Today we are reviewing Call of Cthulhu's Melius Monstrorum, Cthulhu Mythos Bestiary from Chaosium. This is Manny, and I'm here with Matt. There are two volumes. Uh, volume 1 deals with monsters, and Volume 2 deals with the deities of the mythos. Um, uh, volume 1 has uh, 20 pages about using and creating monsters, 150 pages of monsters from the mythos, 14 pages of monsters from folklore, about 20 pages on beasts, an appendix section at the end about pronunciations, which I've caught myself having some <laughs> difficulty um, uh, saying the names myself. Um, volume 2 deals with the, the deities of the mythos, as I mentioned before, 10 pages about explaining about the unknowable, which Matt We'll say something about that. Um, over 200, about 220 pages about the dark gods of the mythos and an appendix section thinking about pronunciations. These books are very thorough. If you're thinking this is going to be just your typical monster manual that you've probably seen in Dungeons and Dragons or whatever, this is not it. This is more of a collection of who's who, of all the things you'll see in Lovecraft, Lovecraftian literature, of all the monster manuals that I've read. Uh, this one, I have to admit, creeped me out the most. A lot of it is just very detailed description about the monsters, about about what their cults are like, uh, their powers, um, their their aura, their history. Uh, what what is it like to first encounter these these monsters and, and beings? Uh, it's it's uh, ex again extremely thorough. Um, it, 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 some of the monsters are so so close to so out there that it just it's very creepy. Chakota, for example, uh, the one with many faces, that, that thing is just, it's just uh, uh, ugly and, and terrifying. Uh, I'm going to pass this to Matt. Matt, why don't you tell me about these monsters in Volume 1? As you said, lots of, lots of different monsters, as many as you could possibly want. They're cults, and, and uh, they're, if, if there's not enough, there, there are random charts for creating more monsters, God knows why. Beginning of this book, though, it, it talks about all the inconsistencies in the creature. The, the, the mythos has been around for so long, and, and there's been so many people involved in creating it, that it's a chaotic mess. Uh, but, but, but as this book points out, that's, that's, a, that's a feature. That's not a bug. It's not a horrible, horrible, face-sucking bug. So the monsters are indescribable terrible in the beginning of this chip book which is the best part tells you about how to role play these monsters both in and out of combat how these com monsters fight how they think how they die how to craft a good terrifying death scene so that even after you've killed the monster it can drive your players crazy it also talks of ways about limiting the monsters so that you can avoid a total party kill at least in the first hour Save that to the end. This has more monsters than a cult master, uh, a game master could ever want. And and reading through the monsters is 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 terrifying. All sorts of terrible ideas grab your brain. Tell us about volume two then, the deities. No, mm -mm. Uh, all the monsters are all the all the deities are here, and and even the. Even the ones that were not exactly nice, but even neutral, maybe like Bast and Nodens in, in, in earlier visions, they've been turned to forces of menace, just as terrible as the rest. There's no escape. But uh, aside from the, the descriptions of, of the deities, uh, they, they talk about their, there's a loose classification, there's great old ones and outer ones and avatars. Um, and again, the book talks about how this canon is is vague and inconsistent. Uh, but instead of trying to correct that, the book points out that this is to be expected because the, the mythos, the Cthulhu mythos, is completely and utterly incomprehensible to, to mankind. So what we have is just a human perception of the mythos. And that's all intentional uh, to confuse your players. And different groups will believe different things about the same God. And the gods may appear differently. And uh, that's because it's impossible for humanity to understand the gods. We are as ants to them. And they are playing a game of rugby, a terrible, cosmic, horrible game of rugby. And we're just down in the middle of the pitch trying to understand what's going on. What was I saying? 
Right. Okay. There's also chapters on how to handle these God help you in combat. How the different ways that the gods are incomprehensibly powerful, but if you do end up in combat, it's not necessarily the death of the entire party because the gods may not notice you. They have different the different desires and, and you might escape death because they don't want to, or or even bother killing you. Uh, there's 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 talks about uh, the, the the book talks about different powers and spells that you can give the gods and how to give them their different powers and spells without overwhelming the players. You know, so a game of Cthulhu is a game of of investigation. Right? You can't just go in with guns blazing. You have to do your research first, right? and then you've got to find the weakness of the monsters and the gods and lock them out just for a time because they will eventually destroy us all. <laughs> If that wasn't enough, there, there are notes on creating more deities if, if you're crazy enough to want more. And the book talks about cults and story seeds. And it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic book for your game master to flip through and lose his sanity while he's discovering more horrible things to do to his players. So if you do not value your soul, I recommend this book. <laughs> Can I yeah. come to the basement now? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, wait, wait till we get 1,000 subscribers, then I'll let you go. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah, if you want Matt out, please subscribe. If not, he's going to be there for a while. But it's all right, though. Don't feel bad for him. I got enough bread and water to last a bit. I, I ate all the candles you left me. <laughs> What's great about this book is that even if you're not a hardcore Call of Cthulhu player. Um, if, if you love, if you just want a who's who of what's, what exists in the books, this is a great thing to have in your collection. Now, what's great about what, what my, the best experience I got from this book is, is it showed me how much I don't know and how much I want to know about about these books. I mean, they're, they're if, if, if these, if this is just, this, this, if these descriptions alone were is enough to keep me up at night, I can imagine how great the books are. No. No, you don't want to read. You don't want to know. Run, run. No, it, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Complete with misunderstandings and heresies. And my phone is ringing. So, <laughs> just a second. <laughs> yes, hi. I'm trapped in a basement and I can't talk right now. I'll call you back. <laughs> that, that was the call of Cthulhu and <laughs> I put him on hold. <laughs>